Good morning and welcome into Arise with the Guys 2020. We are so glad that you decided to stream us here this morning. I promise you it's going to be a fantastic morning with an all-star lineup. My name is Dave Berger, a longtime TV news and sports reporter here this morning, and I'll, I'll help to kind of keep the program moving along as we go along here. Now, if you were at Arise with the Guys 2019, we concluded last year's program saying 2020 would be the biggest event yet. And honestly, we may just deliver. We decided to just throw caution to the wind and just stream this across the world. So who knows who will have an opportunity to reach here with this morning's message. It could be a fantastic morning, no doubt about it. And hey, honestly, we're all sports starved. There's nothing sports related going on in the entire world. We're the only show in town, so this is fantastic. Look, uh, these are crazy times, no doubt about it, but we're so glad that you decided to join us here this morning. And if you've never been to an Arise with the Guys event before, basically what we do, we pick a Saturday in April every year, and, and we, we pack out Grace Church in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, 4,500 guys. We bring in big names throughout the sports world, and we talk about what it means to follow Jesus in your life. And then, of course, head coach, Hall of Fame head coach, Tony Dungy, brings his message of what it means to live an uncommon life at home home, in your school, at your job, and beyond. And that message, of course, will surface again this morning. Look, uh, as always, every Arise with the Guys, we give away tons of prizes, and we want to do that again this year. So pull out your phones right now and text AWTG2020 to 555-888. AWTG2020 to 555-888 and be eligible for this morning's giveaways. And we will announce those prize winners a little bit later in the show and alert you if you have won. we got plenty of prizes to give away. Let's get this thing kicked off right, I'm going to bring in one of my good buddies. He's a longtime sports broadcasting personality here in the Twin Cities and across the upper Midwest. You've heard him for years on WCCO radio. You've seen him for years on WCCO TV. He's a good buddy and he's going to help kick things off here. It's Mr. Mike Max kicking off a rise with the guys 2020. Mike, good to see you. Hey, wireless. A wireless Boom. action. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this big day. In a different way, we're coming to you, of course, on your computer screens and television screens out there, but hopefully just as impactful. Arise with the Guys, of course, has a very storied tradition. And for the last several years, there's been one person in the middle of it, a Hall of Fame coach by the name of Tony Dungy. Yeah, Hall of Fame coach and a Hall of Fame person. Everybody knows that in football, and that's met Tony Dungy, and he's nice enough to join us now. Tony, thank you so much. I know this is one of your pet projects over the years, Arise with the Guys. It really has been, Mike, and, uh, you know, we get interrupted a little bit here with this virus setup, but being able to do it online and, and stream it to people, I think it's still going to be fantastic. We're very excited about all the people who have uh, volunteered to participate think we're still going to have a great Saturday. You know, this is also draft week in the NFL, and I'll never forget talking to you about that one day, and you told me two things I never forgot. Number one is, when you draft, you can always draft for character. You should never be surprised because you have access to homework. And number two, you said, if you really want to know something about a guy, call the equipment manager because he sees how he acts every day in the locker room. Is, is, are those some of the things you look for when you prepare for the draft? Absolutely true. Yeah, I was just talking to uh, a group of Ohio State players yesterday about that, and they were asking, what do coaches look for? What do you want? And I said, you know, everybody's got talent. And so talent isn't going to win championships for you. I'm looking for character. I'm looking for culture. I'm looking for guys who are going to be great teammates. And that is so important. You can draft talent every year and never get it done. But if you draft high-quality players, that's going to be the key to – to really getting your team the way you want it to be. And, uh, and you're right about that. My secret weapon 
was always the equipment man because the coach <laughs> is going to tell you good things. He wants his players drafted in the first round. For the most part, teammates are going to tell you good things. I don't want to let my buddy down, so I'll, I'll kind of make it real rosy and flowery. But if I talk to that equipment man and say, what kind of person is this guy when nobody's watching? And those equipment men will tell you, hey, he's great. You want him on your team or, or I, you know, I can't wait for that guy to leave this campus and I, my life will be a lot better off. Those are the guys you don't want. You have written a book called Uncommon. It is a great book, a best-selling book. And what it talks about is it's easy to be common. It's difficult to be uncommon. And it's a choice that you make in life. We sit here with the coronavirus. We sit here with an empty studio because we can't be together and socialize together. I don't know that there's been a time in any of our lives that has required or asked for more uncommon performances and leadership from each one of us. What does uncommon mean to you in these times? Well, today, Mike, I really think it means teamwork, number one, and working together with other people, and number two, putting my interests behind the good of everyone else. There's things that I would love to do right now that I'm not uh, able to do or shouldn't do because it's not good for everyone else. I'd love to have a graduation party for my daughter, uh, but this is not the time for it. I'd love to get out and have a reunion with some of my teammates and some of my ex-coaches because I haven't talked to them in a while, but this isn't the time to do it. So all of us, I think, putting our interest behind the good of the country, the good of the world, that's been uncommon right now. Tony, when people look at you and your career and winning a Super Bowl and the chance you could come back and coach any time that you want, and they say, how can you give that up when you dream of that? How can you walk away from that? That's uncommon as well. How difficult was that for you? And have you felt that you're more impactful outside of football than you were in football once you walked away? You know, I was uh, really in a great position. I loved what I was doing. The Colts had uh, the next year after I left, they went to the Super Bowl. So we had a great team. I knew that was going to be the case. But I just felt the Lord was calling me to do some different things. I had been working with young men from 21 years old to maybe 35 uh, for, for my whole life, basically. And I just felt it was time to do some other things. I've gotten to do that. I don't know if it's more impactful or not, but I know I'm, I'm right where the Lord wants me right now. So I haven't had any regrets, haven't thought about it, uh, and have not really seriously thought about going back. When you look back on your career and coming into football as a player to, to the University of Minnesota and, and then into the NFL, is there any piece of advice knowing what you know now that, that you wish somebody would have given you, or was there a piece of advice that you got that really anchored you and tethered you at that time? One regret I do have is that I really didn't utilize my college time as well as I should have spiritually. I grew as an athlete, I grew socially as a person, I grew academically, I got my degree, but I stayed pretty stagnant spiritually, and I didn't start growing as a Christian until I went to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I really look back now and feel like maybe I wasted four years. And that would be my advice to young people as they go into college or they're enjoying their college years. Do all that, but don't, uh, don't regret not spending enough time with the Lord when you're in college. You know, speaking of college, Tony, and speaking of your college... Uh, it was a pretty special year here this fall for the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers. And you know all about that. And you've got a couple of people you're going to talk to about just that. Yeah, I'll tell you what, as an alum, we've been waiting 50 years to see Gopher football come back to that top 10 level. They did it this year. It was awesome to look at. And right now we're going to see some highlights, what it looked like, and then talk to a couple of people who were, who were responsible for that. Gophers did have a tremendous year, and we want to talk now with the two young men who were a big, big part of that, uh, quarterback Tanner Morgan and defensive end Carter Coughlin. Guys, thanks for joining us. And first, I see Tanner 
the row the boat sign in, in the back there. Tell us what that was all about and tell us what kind of feeling that was to have such a tremendous year. Yeah, it was an awesome year for us, um, you know, especially playing with guys like Carter that had been there for a long time and I uh, grew up uh, watching uh, a lot of Gopher football. So to see it, what it meant to our fans and to our state uh, and to have the Row the Boat slogan behind us, which is way bigger than football. It's about serving and giving and more than more than just wins and losses. So that was just awesome for us to be able to have some on-field success uh, with that being of the branch and spreading to a lot of people. Carter, I know you've watched, you grew up watching U of M football, probably never seen a year like this in your life. What was it like for you as a local hometown young man? Since the day I came out of the womb, I've had pride in the University of Minnesota. And, uh, you know, it was, it was really special for, you know, for me personally and the guys in my class to, to leave our legacy at the University of Minnesota with a season like that, just to cap off our careers and um, you know, the, uh, through the ups and the downs, man, we stuck it out and it turned out to be an incredible year. So I'm just, I'm just glad and, and blessed that I was able to play a part in, you know, bringing go for football back to the glory days. What was it in you guys' opinion that made things click this year? Tanner? Uh, I would say just, just our process uh, as a team. Uh, we went through a lot of work and um, on a daily basis, the guys committed to each other um, to be their best every single day. We didn't look we didn't look too far ahead. We took it one week at a time and committed to each other every day and every week to be our best um, and to just change our best daily. And I think that really uh, helped us have success throughout the entire year. Yeah, and I, and I think uh, <clears throat> the connectiveness of our team also played a really big part in it. You know, we connected on the field, but just as much we connected off the field. And so I think that throughout the team, we had a lot of special relationships with our teammates that, you know, really allowed our team to, to bind together. And so, you know, when, when things get tough and it's, it's the end of the game and we need a big play, we can trust each other. And that's, that was huge on our team. Well, you're coming off that wonderful t year. And now this year, I know great expectations, Carter, you're thinking of going into the NFL draft Tanner. Hey, I'm going to lead the team, maybe to the national championship in the Rose bowl. And all of a sudden this hits and things totally change. What, what has been kind of going through you guys' mind in this period of uncertainty? I'll start with you, Carter. Uh, there's a lot of next steps for me that are pretty uncertain. You know, I've, I have no clue where I'm going to spend the next however many years of my life. No clue which team, no clue which staff, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, if I really believe what I believe to be true, then I'm going to trust that God's planning my steps and that God's got it all laid out for me. So that's what I've been praying. I haven't been praying that, you know, I end up on this team or this happens. I've just been praying that I can trust in God's plan and been praying that God's plan prevails. So, you know, at the end of the day, man, I just need to sit here and, and understand that, that I'm so glad I'm not the one planning out my next steps. Yeah, I, I think for me, a big part of it is, um, you know, I, I say a lot that um, and really believe that football is not the most important thing in my life, that my relationship with, with the Lord is. And so now this is a perfect opportunity to truly believe that and see if my actions uh, re reveal that. And just taking it as an opportunity to grow in a lot of ways, uh, obviously in football with, with the mental aspect of things and as well, but really more importantly, spiritually, uh, growing in my own relationship, my prayer life, uh, being able to get, get into the word more as really kind of the old excuses that I had of not spending as much time with, with the Lord are kind of uh, out the window. And I have no more excuses uh, to sit there and not want to just truly spend a lot of time with Jesus. So I think that's been a great opportunity for me to just seek the Lord and be able to help continue to spread the word to others um, through online things and, and Zoom and Skype and things like that. What helped you guys grow spiritually while you're at the university? The University of Minnesota, a huge part was athletes in action. And so when you come in as a freshman, you're invited to Athletes in Action. You're encouraged to join in a discipleship group that's led by an older teammate who's a little bit further along in your faith. And it's it's unbelievable to see the way that that program has grown throughout our team. I mean, the majority of the team is in a discipleship group right now. Yeah, absolutely. I would say about half of our team is involved in discipleship groups. And I remember when I first uh, got on campus in January, January 2017, uh, Carter reached out and invited me and, and another kid who just got there uh, to a discipleship group, and, and uh, we've been going ever since. And so Athletes in Action does a great job of reaching our team uh, to really help um, our team grow spiritually 
uh, and, ha- and through those discipleship groups and other things like Ultimate Training Camp as well. We got a lot of young boys watching this program and watching you guys. Uh, what advice would you have to young boys who say, I, I want to be like you guys? Taylor, yeah, you want to start? I, I, I would say like the, the number one thing is first, like that's truly an honor because I, I was in that position as, as a young kid. Um, but really just uh, if that's what you say you want to do, um, and what you really want to be, then um, it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of uh, commitment to being your best um, and connecting with your teammates as well. And um, there's a lot of work ahead and a lot of things you can't control, but you can control uh, your effort and your response. As long as you do that, um, you're going to have a successful career and in, in whatever you decide to do and, and get into. Yeah, and going off of what Tanner said there, um, control what you can control, right? And so one thing that nobody can ever take away from you is your work ethic and your mental toughness. So, um, you know, doing everything you possibly can to help you achieve your goals at the end of the day, man, all you have to do is say, I did everything I possibly could. So maximize your time, your work ethic, all that kind of stuff. And, um, and then just trust God that he'll direct you wherever the right place is for you. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for your, uh, spiritual walk too. I appreciate that so much. Uh, You're a big part of Rise with the guys and just wishing you the best for next year. Now we're going to turn it back over to Mike Max. He's going to interview one of my favorite guys from baseball, Paul Molitor, and a group of baseball players. We're going to see what spirituality means to them and their faith in the Lord. Wow, now we remember what we've been missing this spring, baseball and baseball highlights, and who knows when we'll see them again. We have a Hall of Fame Major League Baseball group with me behind me, and it is uh, just an absolute pleasure to have them join us today. Hall of Famer Paul Molitor, veteran pitcher Adam Wainwright, former twin, now a Texas Ranger, Kyle Gibson, all a part of a rise to the guys. Gentlemen, thank you so much for giving us some time today. Paul, I'll start with you. As, as you watch the coronavirus, and it obviously it affects the world, and we all know sports takes a backseat to it, but baseball, it's such a, a ritual and such a habit, and we love to get into this, especially in April with great optimism. How has baseball handled it behind the scenes, and, and, and what has this been like for baseball to go through something like this? Well, Mike, um, you know, there's a lot of cliches being thrown around unprecedented times and trying to remember what our priorities are. Um, No question, keeping as many people healthy as we can is number one. But I think we all understand that spring uh, is a time of renewal and part of that renewal each and every year is the start of the baseball season. So people that have a passion for the game certainly are feeling the void. Adam Wainwright, you have uh, just about put a check by every box on the bucket list that you could have in Major League Baseball, and you keep pitching and you keep coming back. What is it that drives you? What keeps you coming back to this game? Well, for one, I just love competing. And uh, getting out there, it's baseball is a team game, but it's fine. Like if it's most pure level, it's one-on-one. It's mano-a-mano, me versus the hitter. And uh, preparation is one of my favorite things about baseball and learning the hitters, studying their film, studying their weaknesses, and learning the ins and outs of everybody's swings and why they hit the ball the way they do. That's one of my favorite things about pitching, and uh, it's what I'm missing the most right now, honestly. It's the ultimate game of, of competition, you know. When I play, if I was going to go play tennis, I'd rather play singles than doubles. I just, I love that one-on-one competition. So, uh, <clears throat> that is, uh, that's, what I, that's what brings me back every time and, and uh, feeling healthy. Is a, is a major thing, too, which I'm feeling healthy for the first time in a long time in the last couple of years. And before we move on to Kyle, who else do you have with you? You've got a friend there to help you, it looks like, Adam. Yeah, which way do I need to move here? This is this is little Sadie Faith. This is my fourth daughter. Um, and she is uh, the sweetest little thing, but she said she wanted to help Daddy, so 
All she right, is. thanks for helping out. Kyle Gibson, many of us that are watching today are Minnesota Twins fans or are familiar with the Twins, although we're streaming this out worldwide. But when we last left you, you were with the Twins and you've moved on to the Texas Rangers. What has that change been like? You know, it's been different. Uh, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't. Uh, you know, walking into a different spring training clubhouse, meeting a lot of different new guys. Uh, that was something I hadn't had to do in a long time. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. We got a really good group down there. And uh, what they did in 2019 really reminds me of what we did in Minnesota in 2018. You know, 78-83, 78-84. And uh, they have a lot of young guys that are really good. And, and now I think we have a starting staff that's ready to compete with anybody. So once we get this thing rolling, we're pretty excited. Paul Mowder, baseball parallels life in a lot of ways, and it parallels you, you, you have to get up and come back and failure being such a big part of the game. A little bit like our faith. Our faith tests us all the time and it's testing all of us right now. What is it about our faith and what did you learn from baseball that you apply to that, the comeback, that you have to believe in something bigger than yourself when things aren't going well? Well, you know, your faith, journey is full of challenges um, many things in terms of adverse circumstances come along and now we are living in the middle of tremendous adversity and you know Mike I, I think back to days of my life where I had pure joy and I paused to thank God for those blessings what's comforting to me is you know that God hasn't changed despite the circumstances that are around us you know Jesus is the same yesterday and today and forever so while we deal with the anxiety of what surrounds us, we can know that God is still there and never changing. He will always love us. He'll never forsake us. And I think I find a lot of peace and comfort in that. Adam Wainwright, in crisis, there is also opportunity. And, and for many people, it's virtual opportunity like we're doing here today. You are doing devotions every day, and you've got some 16,000 followers that follow you virtually now, something that you probably didn't, wouldn't have achieved had it not been for this. Tell us about what you're doing every day devotional and how you're taking a crisis and taking, making an opportunity out of it. Yeah, so uh, this offseason, I... Uh, I got in contact with our pastor at our church at home in Georgia, and uh, I said, Pastor David, I'm, I'm getting this tug. You know, I've done a daily read through the Bible in one year program for the last four years, but I really feel like I'm supposed to do this on a bigger level. And so I want to open this up to the congregation and see if any of the people that attend the church would like to join in on it with me. So uh, I ordered a couple of hundred journals and um, didn't really expect much, and those sold out in a couple of minutes and um now we have like five thousand people six thousand people i think in the church and around the surrounding areas that are doing it with me and then i also have uh sixteen thousand some of the people on twitter just with numbers i would have never never expected and, and um uh, it's not about the number itself but uh it is amazing accountability to be able to walk through the bible every day with with people that are are in all different stages in their faith journey you know, we have brand new believers who have never heard any of the stories I'm talking about. And I have many pastors that are in there with me also uh, that hold me accountable. When I slip up or whatever, they'll text me or email me the next morning. I'll have 25 emails. Hey, you missed this verse up. Hey, you missed this name up. So it's been incredible for me in my personal faith journey. But it's also I know it's blessing many people. And I, I told my wife earlier this year, I think it's one of the most important things I've ever done. But you can join in with us on Twitter at, at uh, Walking W Wayno at uh, Twitter. So it's walking with Wayno, walking W Wayno. Fantastic. Kyle Gibson, you've seen it all in your baseball career. You've played on good teams, teams that didn't finish high. You've had good luck, bad luck, everything in between. When are we most vulnerable, do you think, as Christians to temptation or to giving in? When you're experiencing great success or when you're going through the tough times? Yeah, I think it's the tough times. Uh, one thing that I learned uh, from a pastor up in the Northwest, Levi Lusco. Uh, he talked about, you know, when, when he's in his office, he always has a healthy snack on his desk because when he gets hungry, he wants to have the right thing to eat. If he's hungry and he doesn't have the right thing to eat, he's going to go expand his boundaries. and He's going to eat something maybe he doesn't want to eat. So he, re he relayed that and he, uh, you know, compared that to his relationship with his wife. And he said, when I'm hungry and I don't have my wife around and I'm not, you know, focusing on my wife, I might expand those boundaries a little bit. 
And I think it goes to, to every aspect of our life. When we're hungry, if we look for the right thing to eat, and when we're thirsty, we will look for the right thing to drink, you know, the word of God, and we lean on that. You know, we're going to be filled up and we're going to be, you know, we're going to experience that on a new level. Uh, so I think that's the times when you got to lean in the most. Paul Mauder, I'm going to give each one of you the same question, and we've each got about 30 seconds uh, to answer it. Knowing what you know now, and that's always easy in the rearview mirror, what do you wish somebody would have told you when you got into the major leagues that would have helped you profoundly? In other words, if a young person was sitting here in front of you, and it might be major leagues of baseball, it might be just entering from college to the workforce, what, do you, what advice do you wish you would have gotten at a young age? Well, that's a tough one, Mike, but I, I think for me, um, being a Christian, when I got to the big leagues, um, I fell off the path uh, multiple times along the way, and I wish that I would have had maybe some brothers that I sought out that would have helped keep me a little bit more accountable. I think it adds to the testimony of the journey, but there's no question that um, I think my opportunity to witness would have a lot, been a lot stronger had I clung to some brothers a little bit more closely, as iron sharpens iron, as they say. Adam, what about yourself? As you walk in or the rookie walks into the clubhouse and he's wide-eyed and you say, I was you one day, what would you like to tell him? Yeah, the first thing that popped in my mind, uh, which has changed my career dramatically over the last couple of years, was uh, take the time to recover. Um, put, put a special emphasis on recovering after each start. Um, what does that look like? Is that hyperbaric chamber? Is that, is that uh, changing your workouts differently? Is that getting in the pool a little bit? Is that doing more arm care? I don't know. There's lots of different ways to do it, but, uh, you know, now we're doing needles and we're doing float tanks and we're doing hydro, uh, hyperbaric chambers and we're doing all these different forms of recovery, but I think you should do it before you need it. Kind of like being thirsty. You should drink before you're thirsty. Kyle. Uh, I think you got to keep your priorities, your identity and your passions in line. There's been a lot of times during adversity when I've struggled that those three things haven't been lined up and I've been leaning on the wrong things and looking in the wrong areas to fill those voids. Uh, so I would tell guys to make sure that uh, no matter what's going on, keep your priorities straight, uh, understand where your passion is and where your calling is and always be following that and make sure you have your identity tied up in something that's not as fluctuating as baseball because when you do that you're going to ride that roller coaster every single day yeah easier said than done if you can master that uh, you're going to have peace in life paul Mauder, adam wainwright kyle gibson thank you so much for a major league round table pertaining to baseball and faith gentlemen have we hope to see you back at a ballpark somewhere soon Thank you. Thank you, guys. A Major League Baseball panel, to be sure. Baseball and life, lots of parallels. Let's send it back to Dave. Hey, thanks, Mike. This has been a fantastic morning already. I hope you've been blessed. I certainly have been. This has been a lot of fun, and we've got more planned coming up in the next few minutes for sure. If you're having a good time, show, let me see your hands. And if you're raising your hand at home, bravo to you. Uh, way to be fully, fully engaged. Look, we've been streaming a lot of TV, a lot of movies over the last couple of weeks. Thank you for streaming Arise with the Guys 2020 this morning. We're so glad to have you. Thanks for putting a pause on Tiger King and tuning into Arise this morning. We hope, I don't know, this is a little bit more life in encouraging for you, uh, but you know, no, no judgment at all. And, and honestly, it's so wonderful that we have technology that could pull us all together like this. Uh, technology is great. Think about it for a second. Wherever you are, you are attending an amazing, massive sports event, and you're not even wearing pants. I mean, let's be real. And according to our research, uh, half of you are wearing even less than that. So we do thank you for turning off your Zoom cameras here this morning. Look, we're going to give away a, a few prizes here at the conclusion of this program, some amazing sports memorabilia. So make sure to pull out your phones if you haven't done it yet. Text AWTG2020, AWTG2020 to 555-888 and be eligible for our big giveaway. Obviously, plenty of sports mem memorabilia, some autographed items, and some of our big ticket items. Well, let me just show you here real quick. Obviously, I mean, we've got this big ticket item here this morning. And if you're really in a desperate situation and you have no toilet paper in your house, at the conclusion of this morning's program, we're going to give away something that may help you here a little bit. You know, we've got a couple of these uh, lying around. Yeah, get creative, you know. Uh, look, again, Again, AWTG 2020 to 555-888. Look, let's keep this thing rolling. We're going to bring back Hall of Fame head coach, Mr. Tony Dungy, and he's got some uncommon gentlemen joining him. So, Tony, take it away. Well, welcome back, everybody, to Rise with the Guys. We're excited to have you here, but we're also excited to have two of my favorite NFL players, quarterback Kirk Cousins from the Minnesota Vikings and linebacker Demario Davis from the New Orleans Saints. And Demario, I'm going to start with you because 
I just have to thank you for appearing on a program that originates in Minnesota because I know your heart's been broken by Minnesota for the last couple of years, right? <laughs> Well, well, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Last year, um, a hard fought, a hard fought battle, man. But you got to give those guys credit. Uh, Kirk had those guys ready to rock and roll, and they came in our place and, and won in a tough environment. So it was, a, it was a good battle, man. So it is what it is. What, what are you gonna say to Kirk Cousins right now to get him ready for the 2020 season? You might uh, play these guys. <laughs> Well, you know that competitive nature, that competitive nature that come out and uh, uh, on that field, man. We we we're both gonna be guys gonna give everything that we got, and it's gonna be a battle for sure. I know he'll know we're gonna be ready to run that back, but but other than that, man, Kirk is a great guy, man. Somebody that uh, I hu uh, I hugely admire um, for the stance that he takes, uh, the type of man that he is on and off the field. Um, nothing but much, but much respect, and so it's it's an honor to be on the phone uh, with both of you guys. Well, Kirk, um, how would you respond back to Demario and uh, have him get ready for this 2020 season? We've had some great battles through the years. I believe Demario was first team All Pro this past season, so that's an impressive accolade and uh, says a lot about the type of player he is. But we do play them this year, and uh, I think those battles will continue. They're a tough, tough team, great defense. And as long as he's quarterback in that defense, uh, it's going to be a challenge going against them. Going forward in this time of uncertainty, Damari, I'll start with you. What are the workouts like, and uh, what are you doing to keep yourself sharp and grooved right now without teammates around? Well, it, this actually is a time that – that if I'm honest, it kind of it kind of works in my favor. I'm I'm a, I'm a homebody already, so I I, I do a lot um, at home um, and don't mind being at home. Uh, it actually, it's giving me a lot of time to catch up with with, with my kids and, and and my wife. But as far as training goes, uh, I actually have my trainers out with me um, working out at home before it got real bad. They just left this past week um, and are looking at coming back, you know, uh, real soon. But I, I'm, I'm very creative and, and non-traditional in my workout. So, like, I do a lot of band stuff and a lot of balance work. And, you know, I, I do a little bit on the field, but it's not like I'm a receiver or a DB where I got to, you know, run 50, 50 yards to, to get a good workout. Um, I can do a lot of short in-space work. Um, and so we've been able to do a lot with that and, and, and film-wise and looking at film and, and areas of deficiencies you know, in my technique and stuff and how I can great, get greater mobility and, and get in and out of breaks and stuff like that better. Um, but it's also been a good time for me just to grow my mind. I've been able to, 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 to do a lot of reading. I've been watching a lot of documentaries. I actually uh, downloaded a Masterclass app, which is a phenomenal app and stuff to just grow my mind and, and, and learn areas that I hadn't, you know, really had time to just stop and do. Um, so I, I feel like it's been it's, it's been a real interesting and challenging time, but it's also uh, afforded a lot of opportunities. Kirk, how about for you as a quarterback? You kind of need your group around you. You need your guys. How have you been able to keep yourself going in this uh, period of isolation? Yeah, we're making do with what we have. Uh, we're in Orlando right now with my parents so that we can get their help because I have two young boys under the age of three. So having the grandparent help makes a big difference. But I'm literally working out in my parents' driveway. I've got my laptop set up and using technology to connect with my trainer. And I'm working out with the jump rope and some bands and a medicine ball right there in my driveway. And my older brother is my receiver. We're playing catch. He comes over to the house and we play catch. So I'm still getting the work in. It's done a little bit differently. But I'm learning how to be efficient with what we have. And uh, we're pretty fortunate as football players that this virus hit after the previous season and before the next season. We'll see if it ends up affecting this fall. Uh, I'm praying that it does not, not only for football, but for our entire country and for our world. But um, uh, if it truly is just these two, three months here in the spring, I think us as football players, we will be um, in a pretty good spot and we really will have dodged a bullet. But I know both of you guys have worked tremendously hard to get where you are, to be at the top level of football and, and to be recognized as, as two of the best players in the NFL. But I know um, life to you guys is more than just being good football players. Demario, what has this whole virus situation kind of taught to you and brought through and, and emphasized to you about your, your spiritual life? I think um, 
you know, during adverse times is when uh, what you stand on and your foundation becomes most important. Um, you know, when the when the virus uh, became a, a pandemic, something that was in touch our entire world and something that that's unprecedented. It sent me right back to, to, to praying with God and, and spending time in my word. And the more and more I looked at it, the more and more encouraged I got, because uh, a crisis is nothing new to God. This isn't this isn't something that's unique to him. He's he's been uh, a part of every crisis that, that has ever touched uh, what people thought was a crisis that has ever touched uh, the earth. He's been a part of it. And so it's nothing new to him. He's not surprised by it. And uh, the confident word that I got that I've been kind of standing on is um, one. He just he just his word encouraged me to stop looking at the world and, and focus my attention on him. Um, it also ta- taught me to uh, to seek him for the answers that I'm looking for. And so I go to his word to seek uh, his advice and what to do during these times and then to just stand on his promises. And one of the greatest promises is Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good for those called according to his purpose. So though this looks like a a very dire situation, we know that it's going to work together for good, that he's going to ultimately get the most glory from it. And that's what it's about. That's what the story of his Bible tells us. Everything works for his glory. And so I don't know how he's going to get glory from this, but I know that he is going to get glory from it. And that's the promise that I'm standing on. And that gives me hope. That gives my family hope. And so uh, though this situation could be very stressful, uh, is his word gives me uh, uh, a deep peace that I can have for for myself, for my wife, for my children, and um, for other people that we uh, influence. Kirk Demario mentioned having peace in this situation. How uh, how have you found uh, that peace that that he's talking about? Well, I would echo what Demario said. I think uh, looking back this past week, uh, we had a team Bible study, if you will, on a conference call that our team chaplain, Tom Lamphere, led. That was on Monday night of last week. And Tom took us to Matthew 6 and 7, to the words of Jesus. And Jesus talks in Matthew 6 about uh, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And talking about not storing up treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but storing up treasure in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. And so this this whole experience with COVID-19 has really reminded me of the importance of not storing up treasure here on earth. And as God has blessed both me and Demario, our families, our football careers, it can be very tempting to start to store up treasure on earth because the the world, in a way, has patted us on the back and told us uh, that we're successful and uh, that that we're living a dream. And uh, we can easily forget to be storing up treasure in heaven. And so this has been a great reminder of that. And then Tom took us to Matthew 7 at the Bible study, which talks about, in the words that Mario used, a foundation. And Jesus says, uh, you know, you build your foundation on the rock or the sand. And the storms of life are going to come to both the person who built his home on the rock and the person who built his home on the sand. Just because you build your life in the correct foundation doesn't mean you're going to avoid storms. But when the storm comes, your house, your life will be able to stand if you're built on the correct foundation. And so again, this COVID-19 time has really reminded me of the importance of building my life on a foundation that is Jesus Christ and his word. And uh, any other foundation is, is sinking sand. And I think many people as a result of this challenging time are being reminded of that and, and being reminded to look up and to look for their answers uh, in God's word and in Jesus. And I think that is where one of the ways that God is getting glory through this difficult time. You know, we've got a lot of young people tuned into this uh, broadcast and uh, wondering about what's happening. And maybe some of them have had their senior years, you know, disrupted. They've had their plans disrupted. They're not sure what's going to happen. What would you say? I'll start with you, Demario. What would you say to, to a young person uh, to give him a little confidence right now? Uh, in what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to give anyone a, a, a false confidence. I first would say for everyone to acknowledge that this is something very unique to our history uh, of the world, you know, and so if the closest thing you can kind of compare what's happening right now is maybe like the Great Depression, uh, which many of us weren't alive for, um, or at a Black Plague, you know, which no one was alive for. So 
it's a very unique time in history. And but I can say that for this to be something that could cause, you know, uh, that would be can cause and make you a part of all the mass panic. The thing that that has given me confidence and has given me peace is my relationship with God, which I developed in 2008. And so that's why I would encourage people to really focus on their relationship with God, because any adversity, this could have been a, a, a mild adversity or something that's uh, something that happens every so many years or the first time it's ever happened like this. Uh, and it and it's like what Kirk talked about when you have a rock, uh, uh, when you're built on, on a steady foundation, uh, no matter what comes, you won't be swayed. And so uh, being prepared for this moment simply comes from that relationship with God. And that's why I would encourage everybody to have that or to seek and find that. Kirk, what advice would you give a young person who maybe is a little confused right now? Well, I remember when I was a junior in high school, my very first game as a varsity quarterback. Uh, this was going to be my dream, my junior year, the chance to be recruited to play in college. And I broke my ankle in the very first quarter of the very first game. And I remember coming home from that doctor's appointment after the game with a broken ankle with tears in my eyes saying, uh, God doesn't know what he's doing. God just took my future and, and stomped on it. And uh, what do I do now? I won't be able to get recruited. And I won't be able to play college football, which was my dream. Looking back now, I'm embarrassed that I even made that comment or had that thought because God is so much bigger than a broken ankle and he could do whatever he wanted with my football career. Uh, regardless of the injuries that came in my path. And uh, at that time, I remember claiming Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 as my life verse, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your steps. And he's done that in my football career for the last 15 years since that broken ankle. And he'll do that in, in any young person's life as they go through this challenging time. And as it appears that God doesn't know what he's doing and that their life is now going in a different direction and that there may be long-term ramifications, I would just say Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, claim that verse, memorize it, pray that verse, and watch God show up time and again in your life. And I think you'll be able to look back a few years from now and see how God used this time to bring you exactly to where he wanted you and that God is not surprised by this virus. He has a plan for your life, and he's going to accomplish those plans. Our job is to trust and obey him and let him handle the rest. Well, that's great advice and uh, definitely great peace of mind for people. Demario, Kirk, thank you very much. We're going to hear a little bit more from Kirk Cousins. Most of the people in the Twin Cities area and Vikings fans know about Kirk, but for those of you who don't, here's a little highlight video to tell you a little bit more about Kirk Cousins. You know, I'm the son of a pastor. I'm a PK. And so when I was at a very young age, I believe I was seven or eight years old, I remember my dad in the back of church one day before the service had started, sat me and my older brother down and explained to us what salvation meant. And uh, uh, we prayed the prayer to accept Jesus into our heart. But at that time, when you're seven or eight years old, it's hard to really commit to walking with God. Uh, you have to grow in an understanding of that. And so I remember it was about halfway through high school when I realized that to follow Jesus and to truly make him the Lord of my life may cost me something from time to time. And I had to make a decision at that time if I was going to truly commit to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus and not just a fan. I think there's a lot of people right now, uh, especially in America, who would raise their hand and say, I am a fan of Jesus. But the minute it comes time to being a follower, 
uh, they don't want to follow. They don't want to make any sacrifices to truly walk with Jesus. And so it was in high school, I remember I had a Bible teacher who challenged me with a verse, 1 John 2, 6, which says, those who claim to be in him, those who claim to be in Jesus, must walk as he walked. And I was challenged by that because to walk as Jesus walked is difficult. It's not easy. And it takes a commitment. And so at that time, I made a decision. You know what? Uh, If culture, if my friends start to walk away from Jesus, I have to be willing to walk towards Jesus and lose when it comes to my friends or to culture. I have to be okay with that. And, uh, and so I made that decision at that time. And I look back now, 15 plus years later, and I'm so thankful that I did. You know, as a football player, as a quarterback, uh, the playbook is my lifeline. I remember arriving at Michigan State as a freshman, having no clue what I was doing because I didn't know the playbook yet. And by the time I was a fifth year senior and it started 40 plus games, uh, football was was a breeze. Going out to practice was second nature. And the reason was I knew the playbook. I knew it backwards and forwards. Not only had I studied it and memorized it, but I had lived it out day after day, practice after practice, game after game. And I knew what those plays in the playbook looked like when it transferred to the field. And uh, then when I went to the NFL, the one of the biggest challenges as a pro quarterback is can you learn a new playbook and can you learn it quickly? And then when I left my previous team and came to the Minnesota Vikings, once again, I was dropped a brand new playbook that I needed to learn. When our offensive coordinator was, was let go and moved on, a new offensive coordinator came in. Guess what? I've got to learn a whole new playbook. And, uh, and now Gary Kubiak is our offensive coordinator with the Vikings for this coming season. And he, again, is going to have playbook adjustments that have to be memorized, not only by me as the quarterback, but by our entire offense. And so even in this time of COVID-19, we're having virtual meetings to install that playbook and learn that playbook. Because if we don't have those meetings and spend time in the playbook, we're not going to have a chance this fall, especially against great players like Demario Davis. And so we have to be in the playbook as football players to have any chance at success. Well, as much time as I spend in the playbook for football, and as important as that is, what I'm holding right here, the Bible, is the playbook for life. And God wrote a book. Uh, it, it, it's his story. And for us to have any chance at succeeding and winning in the game of life, we got to be in this book, man. We've got to be studying this book. we got to understand it just like a quarterback tries to understand a football playbook. And so in closing, I just want to share a few verses from this book, which I've built my life upon. When you talk about building your life on the rock, it's this book. And uh, I'm not making this stuff up. These are words from this book that I want to close with to share with you. So I want to take you to the book of Romans, chapter 3. The Apostle Paul is writing here. And he says this in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I find that verse to be very simple and very direct. We've all sinned. Everybody screwed up. Coach Dungy has screwed up. I've screwed up. Dave Gibson, as sharp as he is, he's going to follow me. Uh, He's screwed up. And so we've all sinned. And, uh, And the Bible goes on to say that the wages of sin is death. So in other words, you know, as as men, when you work, you earn a wage. The reason you get that wage is because of what you've done, the work you've put in. Well, the same is true with sin. Sin is what we've all done. And then our wage for what we deserve for sinning is death. We deserve death. And the definition of death is separation from God. And so as we are born sinners, what we deserve then is to die once and then to be separated from God for eternity. But Paul goes on here to say um, in Romans 6, uh, 23, if I could pull that up. Paul says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so we have hope, but we don't have hope in ourselves because sin has separated us from God. And so what we must have is is a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And uh, I also want to read from Hebrews 9.27. Hebrews 9.27 says this, Just as man is destined to die once, and after that to face judgment. 
So the Bible makes it very clear uh, we're all going to die because we're sinners. And as you look around, you realize the current death rate is 100%. So we're going to die. And I don't know if we like the thought of that or if we face the reality of that and what it's going to mean, but we need to have an answer to the question, what happens when you die? Because Hebrews says we're not only going to die, but then after that, we're going to face judgment. And so my challenge to all of you listening is, what is your answer to the question, when you die and when you face judgment, what's going to happen? And as a Christian, because I've given my life to Jesus and and asked him into my heart and and to take over and be the Lord of my life, I have peace with that. When I die, I know I'm going to stand before a holy and living God. And he's going to say, Kirk, what did you do with your sin? The wages of sin is death. What did you do with that? And I'm going to say, well, you're right. I'm, I'm a sinner. But long ago, I asked Jesus, who lived a sinless life and died for my salvation, I asked him to come in and be the Lord of my life. And so, Lord, I put my sin on your son, Jesus, and therefore I have a relationship with you. And he's going to say, good answer. And I'm going to spend eternity with with him in heaven because of what Jesus has done, not because of anything I've done. But the key is, is you have to bring him into your life and make him the Lord of your life. Otherwise, you're going to stand before the Lord and he's going to say, what did you do with your sin? And the answer is going to be, Lord, it's it's still on me. I don't I don't have an answer. This it was my sin. I have to own it. And that's when the answer from from the Lord becomes, as scripture says, depart from me. I never knew you. And then we, we would spend eternity separated from him. And my heart beats to see no one spend an eternity apart from God. I want everybody to be in relationship with him such that they can spend eternity with him. And so uh, I want to be able to give the opportunity now for anybody who doesn't believe they've prayed that prayer or, or asked Jesus into their life to become the Lord of their life, or potentially they prayed that prayer a long time ago, but they look back now and they realize this is a wake up call. My life has gone off the rails And I need to get back. I need to rededicate, recommit my life to walking with Jesus. I want to pray that prayer with you and give you that opportunity now. You know, going back to the book of Romans, uh, in Romans uh, 10, it says this. If I could just pull it up. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says this. It explains how you achieve salvation. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's that simple. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And then verse 10 goes on to say, with one heart, with the heart, one believes, resulting in righteousness. And with the mouth, one confesses, resulting in salvation. And so if you're at a place right now after uh, listening to this Arise with the Guys, where you say, you know what, the Lord's tugging at my heart, and it's time to confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. Uh, And I want to make that commitment and make him the Lord of my life. Then I would like to pray with you. And uh, in the silence of your own heart, you can just repeat this prayer after me in, in your own home. All right. So let's pray. Father, uh, I, I admit that I'm a sinner. Uh, I, I acknowledge that I have fallen short of the mark. And yet, Lord, I, Acknowledge that um, you have sent your son, Jesus, to die for my sin and then to rise again and defeat sin and death once and for all. And so, Lord, I I now accept Jesus' death and resurrection as payment for my sin. I thank you for the gift of salvation. And I now ask you into my life that you would become the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and enable me to walk with you all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The path to salvation is very simple. It's not in anything we've done, but it's in what Christ has done for us. And this playbook explains that very clearly. Well, if you've made a decision to follow Christ, uh, we want to connect with you. We believe that uh, it it takes a community to walk with God and you should not do it in isolation. And so if you have made that decision and you want to get connected to somebody uh, to learn more about what it means to follow Jesus, uh, we would ask that you would text 
AWTG, which stands for Arise with the Guys, AWTG Decision, so that's all one word, text that to 555-888. And if you're someone who tuned in today and still has questions and wasn't willing to pray that prayer or to take that step, but you'd like to learn more, I would challenge you and ask you to text the same acronym, AWTG, but with the word question instead of decision, AWTG question, text that to the same number, 555-888. And uh, someone will follow up with you, regardless whether you text a decision or question, someone will follow up with you to continue that discussion. Either way, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for investing of your time to hear from God. The Bible also in this playbook talks about how God's word does not return void. When it goes out, it accomplishes the purpose that God intends for it. And so God's word was heard today. It was spoken. And because you've invested your time and listened, I believe God is going to bear fruit from that and, uh, and, and make an impact and a blessing in your life. Now I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Dave Gibson. Dave's a pastor at Grace Church uh, here in the Twin Cities. And uh, Dave will speak once a year at our team chapels the night before our games. And I always look forward to hearing him speak, as do all my teammates. Uh, Dave is a spirit-filled man who loves the Lord, and he's going to help you with next steps. Thanks. Well, what a morning. I hope you were challenged and encouraged as I was. And we really appreciated the, the athletes and coaches as they testified about what Christ means to them about their football and their sports experiences were really inspirational, but also uh, the difference that Jesus Christ makes in their lives. If you prayed along with Kirk Cousins here today to trust in Jesus Christ, you know, the Bible says that you've become a new creation, you become a new person. Uh, in John 1, 12, it says, to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gives the power, the right to become a child of God. I wanna be the first to welcome you to God's forever family. And as you become a part of that family, it's really important that you continue to grow in your relationship with the Lord. We've prepared some materials especially for you. We'd encourage you to respond to that text on the screen, and we'll get those materials to you right away. But it's critically important that you understand that uh, Jesus said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, and that he'll be with us always, even if you don't feel like it. You have uh, several really important things have happened to you if you've trusted Christ here today. First of all, we have the Spirit of God within us to help us grow, that he works in us both to work and to will for his good pleasure, to make us more like Jesus every day. Paul said, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And secondly, he's given us the Word of God to help us grow in our faith. I wanna give you a 21-day challenge. In the Gospel of John, there's 21 chapters, and it's just a beautiful portrait of who Jesus is and how you can get to know him better. And uh, read one chapter a day in the Gospel of John and ask the Lord to speak to you. It takes 21 days to form a habit. That'll be the greatest habit you ever form in your life, reading the Bible every single day. Begin with 21 days in the book of John. And then the third thing that we really need, along with the Holy Spirit within us, the Spirit of God and the Word of God is the people of God, to get involved in Christian community. And if you don't have a church home, I'd really encourage you, next Sunday, go to a church that preaches the Bible and preaches the gospel of how to have a relationship with Christ. I want to ask God to bless each one of you as you continue in your journey with the Lord. The Bible says, let us continue to grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be in our thoughts and prayers. Again, indicate uh, your commitment to Christ, as Kirk mentioned, and we'll send you some materials that will help you in your next steps in walking with Jesus Christ. God bless you as you continue to press on to know him and make him known. Hey, what a fantastic morning it has been, man. We hope you certainly were blessed by Arise with the Guys 2020. And there'll be an Arise with the Guys 2021. Pull out your phones, put this in your calendar right now, April 17th. 2021 for a rise with the guys. We hope to all be back here in Eden Prairie, Minnesota at Grace Church, sitting shoulder to shoulder and packing this place out. And it's going to be a fantastic event next year, April 17th, 2021. God bless you. And thanks for watching.